Parathyroid aneurysms can be divided into four types. The first is superior parathyroid aneurysm or true ophthalmic, true ophthalmic uh, superior aneurysm. Then inferior parathyroid aneurysm or ventral parathyroid aneurysm. Medial, medial could be divided into superior type of PCR, um, Aneurysm or aneurysm of the carotid case and lateral paraclinoid aneurysm or yeah. subclinoid aneurysm. These paraclinoid aneurysm arise uh, near the clinoid processes and in this segment of the uh, could we, yeah, the cavernous segment of the carotid artery and the most common is the could be the superior or true ophthalmic paraclinoid aneurysm. The aneurysm usually follow the four uh, principles of Rotten. The first is that the aneurysm occur at branch branching point. Branching point. Then the aneurysm occur at the curvature of the artery. This is the Concave part, this is the convex part, occur at the convex part of the curvature of the artery. And the third point is uh, the dome of the aneurysm. So here is the, the artery. Let's say here is the aneurysm. This is the neck, this is the dome. The dome has the, the direction or is pointing to the direction of the flow of the parent artery. And four is that the aneurysm has perforated uh, arteries uh, around or near the aneurysm that we need to be careful at the time of clipping. So continue with the true paraclinoid, uh, true ophthalmic paraclinoid uh, uh, aneurysm. This arises distally, distal, distally to the ophthalmic at artery, ophthalmic artery. So the ophthalmic artery arises in the uh, supraclinoid part of the carotid artery, specifically the uh, ophthalmic part of the supraclinoid artery. And the artery, together with the, the ophthalmic artery, together with the um, with the optic nerve, passes through the uh, optic channel. The artery goes below. There are some anatomic variants in which the ophthalmic artery can arise from the cavernous sinus here and then pass uh, through the orbital superior orbital fissure or in some uh, cases there is a foramen uh, here in the optic strobe the optic strobe is the part of bone that is between the let's say the optic channel and the superior orbital fissure so here the optic the optic strobe, if there is a foramen there called the ophthalmic foramen, the artery can pass through there. Well, in any way, the superior or true ophthalmic paraclinoid, uh, paraclinoid aneurysm arises distally to the or distal to the ophthalmic to the origin of the ophthalmic artery from the internal carotid artery, and there could be projections superior, superior or superomedial projections. The superior medial projections are more commonly and because they are more common and because they present with compression of the optic nerve, uh, optic chasm, uh, they will present with visual deficit. Visual deficit. Um, as opposed to the superior projections uh, because here they usually are lateral to the optic nerve so they do not and compress the the optic nerve or optic chiasm, so no visual deficit or minimal visual deficit. So these are the most common and the worst. In large aneurysm, large superior ophthalmic uh, aneurysm, or, yeah, superior or paraclinoid aneurysm, with superomedial projection, this could be confused with uh, paraclinoid aneurysm that are the superior hypophysial type, or in some cases, the inferior or ventral uh, paraclinoid aneurysm. Especially if this 
superior para que los aneurys eh, proyecten into the cellar region or the supracellar region. Um, to distinguish this, because this confusion usually arises in the uh, anterior, anterior posterior view in the uh, in the tomography, but we can use oblique and lateral views. Um, the approach to this, usually of every paracranial aneurysm, is as follows. First, we need to remove three parts of the bone, that is the um, attachment points of the dura with the anterior client process. So we have, first, we remove the anterior uh, clinoid process, the roof of the optic channel, and the, uh, the optic, optic strut. So here we will remove the uh, anterior clinoid process anterior client process, the roof of the optic channel and the optic uh, optic strip here. So we will remove this three part and then uh, we will remove the falciform ligament the falciform ligament that is surrounding the optic nerve and then the distal distal dural ring and sometimes also the proximal dural ring. This is to expose the ophthalmic artery. So this has four advantages. One is to expose the ophthalmic artery to avoid uh, accidental clipping of the artery. Then to expose or better exposure of the neck of the aneurysm. We will need to visualize the neck of the aneurysm from all, all the parts to make sure that we're not clipping uh, something accidentally. Three, uh, the third is to better expose the internal carotid artery to have a better mobilization of the artery at the time of clipping. And four is to decrease the risk of stenosis of the uh, internal carotid artery at the end of clipping. So the uh, paraclinoid aneurysm arises at the at the arter internal carotid artery near the clinoid processes, and we have superior or true ophthalmic, uh, inferior or ventral paraclinoid aneurysm, uh, medial uh, or from the internal carotid cave or the superior hypophysial uh, arteries, and lateral or subclinal uh, paraclinal aneurysm and the treatment is mainly the, well the approach the surgical approach is mainly the same the the complications are rare but we need to consider um, renorrhea this occurs from a uh, pneumatization of the anterior clinal process or during the uh, removal of the optic strut visual deficit because of damage to the blood supply to the optic nerve or the optic chiasm and heat damage to the optic nerve um, and the, the ischemic or thrombotic embolism that can occur when manipulation of the artery. Um, this, this could be avoided easily and always we need to have a proximal control. So when we are clipping, so here we have the aneurysm. Let's say this is the internal carotid artery, this is the ophthalmic artery. And let's say here distal is the aneurysm. Here's the aneurysm. And when we are clipping, the definitive clip is here in the neck of the, of the aneurysm. But before we put the definitive clip, we need to put a temporal clip uh, before, before the definitive clip in order to avoid the bleeding that can occur when we are clipping the aneurysm because that is one of the most risk points. So we will do a proximal control that is clipping the artery proximal to the aneurysm and usually the, uh, the proximal control is exposing the cervical uh, segment of the internal carotid artery.